Hello, it's Mike and Denise, and we just watched a movie called Downfall, The Case Against Boeing. So I'm gonna give my thoughts on it. And Denise heard my thoughts, actually, while we were watching the movie. Yeah, I and I, I to hear your But <laughs> I wanna talk about it, because it's not so obvious. They don't really make the point, and actually Denise kind of said in the beginning of the movie that this is a software thing, and there were some bad subcontractors in India or something, but that wasn't, that's not what really happened. We want to talk about yeah, what really happened, experience. but that's, that's not what happened. That's the news that was leaked. Yeah, but <laughs> if that's what people got, you got to watch the movie and you got to watch this video. Share both of them, I'd say, because this is the inside information as far as I'm concerned. Now, what I recognized right away when we started watching this is a similarity between a couple, two things. Number one is I say the automakers in the 80s, and of course, Boeing, the downfall started in the 80s if you watch the movie. And what did the automakers do? When I say automakers, I mean the U.S. automakers. They started, well, they stopped innovating. That's what happened. They're, they blame it on everything from the unions to jacking up the stock price to all this other stuff. But when you stop innovating, after a while, you, you, you become exposed. You're gonna, they're going to find out. The only way that wouldn't be the case is if everyone else stopped innovating. But there's always somebody else that's going to start innovating because they want to take market share. They, it's a very competitive market. It's a free market. It's capitalism. So that's what happened to the U.S. automakers. They've never really recovered. The government's bailed them out. I think the same thing is going to happen with Boeing. Because if you watch the movie, you realize, and I knew before, there's a company called Airbus that's very popular. And I think that the Airbus product is just absolutely vastly superior. They spent all kinds of time and money developing the product. And Boeing realized after a while that they didn't have anything that comp competed with the fuel efficiency, which sounds familiar, doesn't it? For like the U.S. automakers. Yeah. So instead of... Hey, we travel a lot. Hey. And almost every flight we We're going to see him at the running group. Between here in Houston and, and uh, Ecuador has been a, an Airbus A it or has. something. Okay, because <laughs> what happened was, that's the same thing that happened with the U.S. automakers. Because if you think about it, Back in the day, the U.S. automakers had some fuel-efficient cars like the Chevy Chevette and a bunch of other things, but they were like the worst cars they possibly had. They, were, they weren't developed right. They, weren't, they were developed like almost under protest, I'd say, and it, it showed in the way the products were and everything else looked better because the Japanese and other manufacturers, they, they, were, they were into fuel-efficient cars at the core of their business because they were smaller roads, smaller countries, people didn't drive as far as like the U.S. Yeah. and that's what they wanted so they perfected those. GM always had a six cylinder and they just took two cylinders out because everybody else had a four cylinder. Okay. <laughs> make it a good idea. Yeah, they were bad cars. They were bad cars all around. They were terrible. They weren't reliable. They didn't work well. There were other products were superior in every way. I think that's what happened with Airbus. They took the time and by the time Boeing realized what had happened, they didn't really go into that th too much in the movie. It was too late. So all they could do really was take their 40 year old platform, the 737 and shoehorn in some fuel efficient engines, which of course were much bigger. I don't know why they'd be bigger to be more fuel efficient. You can comment and let me know. But the reality is I don't know much about jet airplanes or any airplanes for that matter. And I see these planes now and they look really weird. I mean, as I was looking in the movie, these have these giant engines that stick out in front of the wings. And because of that, and they they're higher. <laughs> yeah, they lift, they have to lift them up and stick them out in front in order to make it work. And it screws up the whole balance of the plane. It balances everything, especially when you're talking about an airplane. Uh, definitely with a car, but even more so with an airplane. So when the plane climbs high in altitude too fast, the engines can stall out. <laughs> yeah, so they had to build in a system that would counteract that and prevent the plane from crashing, basically. <laughs> but it caused other crashes. <laughs> That's what the movie, the movie explains in detail how that works. Uh, part of the other part of the story here is that because the FAA is involved and there's training involved for pilots, if you develop a new model, you have to have new training for all the pilots. So Boeing also wanted to avoid that, so they didn't want to change the model. Although that's only one part. I'm tell you, that's only one part of it because developing a new platform takes like a decade yeah. and ridiculous amounts of money too. And yeah, the training has a cost too. And they were trying to keep costs at a minimum so they could compete financially. Yeah, they were trying to basically do everything, but you can't, I realized early on in this movie, I knew how this was gonna end, even though I didn't know much about it. You can't re-engineer an aging inadequate platform and expand the size and footprint and balance, you know, change that of the structure and expect it to work. 
And we also noticed that, I've noticed that with Tesla. If you watch my videos, that's why I say that all the Tesla Model S's and X's are defective. You know why? Because they did the same thing, but they came out from a different angle, all right? They came at it from, they're a new company trying to bring in electric cars to the market and everybody's gas and they gotta do whatever they can do to, just to survive. So they had to cut costs. They had to, they had to do it that way. Even though Elon Musk says now they should have developed a separate platform for Model X, just like they developed a separate platform for Model Y, uh, which is this SUV version of Model 3. They did that because they knew they needed to do that. They kind of screwed up and they had no money in the beginning. It was questionable if they're going to survive. It was not like uh, Boeing that had all the money in the world. They just squandered it and, and failed to innovate. And really, I think there was almost there were criminal charges brought against them. I mean, yeah, they, they just... They had to pay $2.2 in fines. I'd like to know what the government is doing with that $2.2 billion. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Pr maybe printing more money on top of the Who knows? Dilute our currency. That's another story. But I want to go back to Tesla for a second. The reason why Tesla's platforms are all defective, S and X, not 3 and Y, they're fine. And that's most of Tesla. Most of Tesla's gonna be Model Y going forward. Elon Musk knows this too. But S and X, S was designed as a small sedan or, or the low to the ground sedan, rear drive only. Then they added all wheel drive later. They didn't plan on doing that. They didn't know the company would survive. So that became a problem because they had to shoehorn that all wheel drive in there in the front. So it became a problem with the uh, drive shaft angles of Model S. Then when they came up with Model X, they went an SUV cheaply. How do you do it? You just jack up the Model S platform, make it a little wider, taller. Same thing they did with the Boeing 737 Max, okay? It doesn't work. Because then the, then the problems that happen with Model S, which is the front drive shafts wear out very, they, they last the length of an oil change because of vibration and angle problems. It gets even worse in the Model X. So there you have it. That's a similarity. There's two similarities, one between Tesla platforms, one between uh, U.S. automakers failing to innovate, and then you have Boeing. And I don't want to fly on any of this. I'm just telling you, they just, yeah, China apparently at the time of this of recording this video still has banned any flights of 737 Maxes. We're going to Hawaii in September, and I have to make a mental note not to pick a 737 Max because I don't want to crash. <laughs> yeah, and the way the system is, you need this system that they they what's it called? Some M something, some four letter word. I don't know. MCAD. Yeah, something like that. M yeah, MCAS, I think is what it is. Yeah. You need it because the the, 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 car, the chassis is so out of balance. The design is so bad. It has to counteract that. And then they say you have less than 10 seconds to respond if the system malfunctions, which it does from time to time. At least initially it only had one sensor that determined whether it had to uh, activate or not. Maybe they have yeah, two or three now, I don't know. AOA sensor, <laughs> the angle of it has to, it only had one. So if it breaks off on a balloon, then or a there's, bird. there's no sensor and it just automatically goes into MCAD mode and the pilot has 10 seconds to respond. If they know, if they've been trained, they'll know what to do. Otherwise the sucker's gonna go down. The sucker, <laughs> yeah, his sucker's <laughs> going, this bird is going down. <laughs> Yeah, but you all, yeah, I mean, basically by the time you don't correct within 10 seconds, you're probably like two or three seconds from going nose first, straight up and down, uh, vertical, straight into the ground and the complete destruction. Yeah. Or a mountain. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, or a, a tower in New York City if you're leaving from JFK. Yeah. Well, it's bad. I mean, there's, it's because they used an aging platform to try to re-engineer it. You can't, you get to a certain point. There is no more engineering of that platform. You need to develop a new one. Boeing needs to do that. They're never going to own this, apparently. I don't know what. But I'm staying away from those Boeing 737 Maxes. That is just like a Tesla Model X like I have flying in the air. <laughs> it's, it's the one thing if you're on the ground and the drive shaft just breaks and you stop. Okay, you got brakes still, right? You're not in the air. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it's bad. So I hope we're not generating a lot of hate from the Boeing fans, but this was just our uh, There's no, no, there, no, no, there's no <laughs> Boeing fans. No, anybody who's a Boeing fan might as well be a GM fan or a Chrysler fan at this point in time, you know, or a Ford fan as far as I'm concerned. Ford maybe is a little bit better. Don't give up hope. They can build a new plane. <laughs> yeah, I guess the government ought to bail them out just like they did the U.S. automakers, except for Ford. They were the only ones that never got a bailout, right? Uh -huh. But they barely yeah. survived anyway, and it's questionable whether they're going to survive into the future. So we'll see. I think that Boeing is definitely on the way out, and it's too bad. All he did was stop innovating. That's it. But we rode in one stop of the 737 Maxes on the way back from Columbia, and it was beautiful. Yeah, well, my Tesla Model X is beautiful too. So is the Model S, right? They're all defective. It was super wide. Yeah. It had like. 
eight rows inside. No, actually, that wasn't my. That wasn't a seven thirty. That no, that was not it. Because actually, the seven thirty seven is their narrow body plane. So that was probably like a seven fifty seven. Oh. Okay. That that's what that was. That was a nice plane. Yeah, that was a that was a brand new engineered up from a uh, new platform. That's what they needed to do with seven thirty seven, and they didn't do it. Well, it was way nicer than any Airbus we ever rode in. <laughs> Yeah, the seats were comfy and it had but you needed to have a, you needed to have a massive amount of passengers on a plane like that to make that thing work, right? Yeah. You need to have a very busy airport. Yeah. So you only see that the most busiest airports. So that's it. Let me know your com thoughts in the comments, and question. You know, tell me if yes. Tell, say uh, Boeing is dead in the comments. If you think Boeing is dead, now I think I don't think Tesla's dead. Like I said, because they've already phased out. S and X. They hardly build any S's and X's. The U.S. automakers are almost phased out too. They've lost so much market share. But Boeing has a huge amount of their market share on 737 Max. So they are dead. They are DOA. If you ask me, I don't see how they're going to survive. Uh, I think not like they have in the past. I think most people <clears throat> believe that the the problem has been resolved. No, <laughs> oh no, MCAS. no. <laughs> and also, I bet you the Airbus still gets a better fuel economy. Still, even with that this thing because they uh, Boeing kind of half-assed it and uh, they they only they only did half half the work and then you're only gonna get half the results that's that's how it usually works with engineering I'd say in my experience even though I'm not an engineer but somebody tell me if you know that the Airbus models equivalent are much are still more fuel efficient than Boeing well, we I, there's no EPA rating so I don't know how to tell majored in engineering for at least one semester we did? in college. <laughs> okay, so we're experts. <laughs> yeah. Better than no schooling. <laughs> Is it? Yeah. I couldn't even pass calculus. <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Well, is there any, anything else to say about this? No. Except that I am avoiding 730. Anything with 737. Anything they may have left off the max. They may have left off the max by accident. You think uh, I'm going to trust that? They might have renamed oh, them. sorry. We forgot to tell you that. <laughs> It's actually a max. <laughs> Sorry. There's the the water spout there in the back. All right. Bye.